you know, black folks, and basically we had a uh, M class flare yesterday. So I'm gonna go to the data on that. And the number one thing is, whether it's anteres or not, is way basically, I mean, we're sitting at 99.9% .9 that it should be anteres. But no matter what, something rotates around it. And let's go ahead and go right here to what we've got. There's a link. And then you can go ahead and play this and you'll see, as a matter of fact, I'll start it over again in a second, but no matter what, something rotates around because it, either that or it has a gas ring like Saturn. And as you saw there, we get something very interesting. Now, remember how large that stuff is that's out there. Now, every once in a while, when we get a little bit explain something here if you can freeze that now that could possibly but anyhow you've seen what you've seen that flashed in front of it and then we'll hit play again I remember this is Antares possibly you know that we've got to narrow down to it's the biggest thing in that area so uh, remember that it's a star. It's huge. But at the same time, uh, mass four is very, very huge. And it's very far back. More than likely, that's the, the, the M is right there. I think it's M4. Uh, but it's so damn far away. It's very many light years away. And as you've seen there, you get and things that basically make a lot of people ask questions. Fast moving, very fast moving. So, anyhow, at least whatever, if it is anteriors, we get a great look at it and we know for actual fact that is basically gone. Because no matter what, we know it's there. No matter what, we know it's there. right there so we got it with that rings whether it is an Oort cloud or whether it is a gas rings cloud we're gonna be waiting for to see whatever NASA can show us for a close-up shot an actual photo of Antares so we got that there we've seen what you can see on Wikipedia but we want to make sure we get it without artists. And let me re-explain something real fast. Basically, the reason that you see this the way they, they make it look so that when you're looking from Earth up, this is how you got a telescope, you possibly could try to see this. Now, I don't know if you can see Antares with a telescope. I don't know how much money you're going to spend on one. But let me show you the, the actual factual how. The reason it's flipped around on Navy is because this is what uh, JLP is always looking at. Now remember, this is Lasco 3, okay? And I'm going to take it to Lasco 3, the way the Navy looks at it. Hang on. Now, the reason that the Navy looks at it like this, and basically every feature of the armed forces, is they want to know if they would ever see anything that would go very high in the atmosphere, and it's all military, okay? So you look at it this way. They're always looking at Earth. So when they view it, they're looking at Earth, and when, we, and when you get the shot from NASA, they're looking at it in a, in a looking at the solar system, and the Navy wants to look at what it would ever be coming towards Earth. I don't have a good shot right now because this is on black, but Earth would be towards here, and you get your view, Alaska 3 here. Okay. And that's how you see it when you go outside and you try to look at it. So that's they, they put they put it to that if you how you should see it from, from Earth. Okay? But when you look at the Navy we can always I can always find whatever's out there. And that's the same object right there. Okay. Now remember we see uh, on core two ahead. But on behind, it should be more than likely. It should be what you're seeing there. It should be Mercury. 
Okay. As you can see, the, you can just draw a stairway. You can just barely see Mercury. Okay. Just barely see Mercury right now on B. So that should be Mercury on B. But it's going to be interesting. I think I'm trying to remember the direction of movement of and of what we believe to be anteriors. I would think that we should be able to, I believe, be seeing it because the future in the future on B also because uh, they are directly behind the sun. Okay, uh, way back. You know, they're they're held a long distance back. We can see them, but it's going to be interesting if we'll end up seeing them on B eventually, because we're seeing them on A, on uh, core two and, and three. Okay. But they're core two and three ahead, as I've already showed you. Go back to the, the movie that I was showing you in the blue. That's ahead, and then on on the Navy, it's those are the same satellites, or if there's more than one satellite. It doesn't matter. We know there's tons of cameras on one satellite, so it doesn't really matter if it's one satellite or more. We're not questioning that. Don't care about that. I hope there's way more than one. Because on the opposite side, on core two ahead, you don't see anything. See? It looks like the M will miss us. This is Earth here, and then these are all the satellites. A, B, Spitzer, Kepler. Okay. There's your planets there. There's your keys. Okay. And it's the same this is the, the view to the side, the magnetical of Earth, Earth, satellites, as they're moving them around to try to stay away from the CME action as much as they can. Now, uh, what happened is the <coughs> whatever branch turned two satellites over to NASA to be able to look at space objects now. They're too old or outdated to be able to, that we have better stuff to spy on people. And let's put it this way, back in the 50s, they used to be able to read a newspaper. If somebody was outside, they could read what knew what they were reading in a newspaper back in the 50s. So they can they can look at some nice stuff out in space. So that's just an actual factual there. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to look at with those. Uh, it'd be nice to NASA to share what they're using, what they're looking at, so we can see what they're looking at right away with those two satellites that are at their disposal now. And just like I showed you, my electrical theory is exact because there you go. More than likely, that's right on with our M flare. Hang on. Here we go from Boulder. More than likely, that's pretty much adds right up with our M flare there. And we'll probably see some more action maybe when it cross faces again. And space always gives away its secrets. As you can see here, you can't see what we believe to be anteriors. And then when I go over to the other shot, it'll show you. Just watch above this. See, you got the flare here. Flare here. And then you got this dark area here. Well, basically our object's about up here in this black area, right up here along this dark. Watch what will match up. Hang on. See, that's the zoom in shot of this here. So, as you see, it's just above. This is pretty much where it breaks off. Otherwise, that other shot was this all area in here zoomed in. This whole circular area here zoomed in just below this here. Okay. Keep in mind what we have here right away. So that's your map for the day. Okay, so hang on. Remember, I've already showed you that this is pretty much Mercury here. And then you can see a lot of the remnant it stuff basically is still illuminated pretty good between here and the, and the sun. A bunch of stuff, and this is the compression shot. And that is off Each one two ahead. Now we'll go ahead and look at this. There you go, that's Mercury. And you've heard of star water, I'm sure, by now. So, anyhow, uh, I think there's some little trickery going around, but no matter what, then, no matter what, the moon is bleeding. So, that's all I'm going to say at this time. Hello, suspicious observers. You're very suspicious. So, anyhow, the Mercury is the same size as the moon. Same makeup. So, Remember when they shot a rocket at the moon a while back? Yeah, they had to calm a lot of people in some country down because the idea that they were just wanting to make sure that if there was water where they were hitting, they would have been told scientifically, that, yep, there was water on the moon, right? So, uh, Bino's got a lot of info on the moon. Okay, a lot of actual factual. You know? That was Mercury looking at. Or we being able to see Mercury all the way across behind and ahead.
If so, that could be Venus right there. real good radar with its uh, electrical static field and as you can see Venus is still doing its little there's Venus up there in the corner doing its action up there you'll see there keep watching that little corner up there and you'll see Venus doing its CME reactor play the great awesomeness of the Sun throwing that huge CME out matter of fact I'll come down in size a little bit so you can see all this okay screen so you can see all that. There you go. Venus doing its CME reactive flare right up over here. It's a CME reactive flare to, to a CME off the sun as you see it does that with its atmosphere. You see Mercury doing the same thing here with its atmosphere. So yep, atmospheres do that action and basically uh, I'm the one that came up with the theory because NASA kept on saying it was camera flare. It's not camera flare. It's the actual atmospheres of the planets. And yes, Mercury's got somewhat of an atmosphere. It's got water on it, doesn't it, dumbasses? So, there you go. So anyhow, now I'm not the one that said it had water. NASA's the one that says it has water. So then my theory is correct. Thank you, NASA, for telling me my theory is correct. And then basically here we may actually have, uh, we may actually catch Venus and Mercury again over here on the other side and as CMEs are making them glow real large right now so you can they're very easily seen across space as you see this shot here okay and we'll blow in on that here at this shot folks from Sechi. So it's the other side so you've seen both sides. Now let's go ahead and take a look at and as you see you got everything marked here. Mercury over there and this should be Saturn more than likely and that's Mars over here. And this magnetical line there that's on the back of the deal basically is kind of being split weird over there. Either that or there's something else. So and basically there is something else isn't there folks. So let's let's blow in on that because basically this is Mars here. What's back over here? And that's Saturn, and that accounts for everything because the Neptune and Uranus and everything like that are way out the back door of Earth here. And I'll show you another shot too. Now, can Antares be giving that much of a magnetical behind the sun right there, right now? As you see that, it's so bright that it's going right through the solar panel on the satellite. It's very bright. So odds are, the largeness and the closeness has got to be the only object that's up there by the sun. And tears more than likely bleeding through the solar panel because everything over here is accounted for. That's Mars, Saturn, and everything else is listed. And Neptune and Pluto and Uranus is all at the back door. Let's go to that shot where that should be at and the other shot. Okay? Now it's kind of a stretch, but no matter what, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto and everything are all out the back door of Earth here in the darkness. See the darkness? They're all back here. These could be them right there and then something else, but they're in the behind. They're not in that other shot I just showed you. So we got something we found behind the solar panel on the other side, on the other, on the other telescope in space, other satellite. So keeping you in touch with the latest and greatest in space. And thanks to all every branch of the armed services, you get these shots. So there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. So more soon.